one of the things that we have to recognize is something so important. This is it right here. This is it right here. Remember, we're broadcasting. This is it this morning or, or tonight. That the praise will always supersede victory. Remember that. Your praise will always see, supersede victory. So in other words, praise Him before the breakthrough. People wait till, well, I'll only praise Him after. No, no, no. You praise Him before. Father, I thank You that we have won. We're blessed. I'm healed. Whatever it may be. Praise Him in the midst of it. The reason why is the devil hates that and it drives him berserk. And it also lets him know that you're not going to be moved by the pressure of the problem. Hallelujah. Amen. And so he just backs off. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we have to realize that. Amen. And also another thing too, another thing too, uh, if you think about it, we're here today because of what he did. That's why I'm here. I am here today to bring you a message and I'm here to worship with you because of what he did for my life. I'm not here just to say, okay, pastor, uh, you know, it's Wednesday. You got 20 minutes to t tell me, uh, you know, it's my time. Can I say something? It's not about you. It's about him. We didn't, you know, and a lot of, amen, go ahead and give the Lord a praise. Amen. A lot of people come to church, not here. Some people come to church and say, well, you know, okay, I'm here. So, uh, pastor, you better do it within 45 minutes. Now, they may not say it, but their heart is that way. It's not about you again. It's about him. Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why we've come. You know, it's raining outside. What a beautiful rain we've had today. But it's not about the rain that we're, keeps us at home. Uh, it's about Jesus giving us the rain to come to church. Think about it that way. A lot of people say, well, I'm not going to church because it's raining. Well, you're not looking at it in the eyes the way God looks at it. If you come to church... While it's raining, it, it's showing you that you're going beyond your comfort zone. You're going beyond what you think. Anyway, who's going to worry about your hairdo being all wet? Hallelujah. Amen. And so let's go ahead and do that. I want to continue. Uh, I didn't realize I thought I ended it Sunday, but, but the Lord spoke to me. And matter of fact, today, as we were preparing, uh, let's go to Hebrews, the sixth chapter. We're going to talk about the pipeline of faith, which we, we call it the conduit of faith. Uh, this is part number four. And uh, they're very powerful. God has been speaking to us about our, pop, our pipeline. We're going to talk about extending, expanding your pipeline. Expanding, meaning stretch it. Um, the stretching part is important. You know, when you go to gym, when you go to the gym or if you ever, you know, like for instance, uh, let's say you've never been to the gym and you go and you're war, plumb wore out by the time you only have five minutes in it. Well, you know that your body's not accustomed to that. So it's going to take another time to come back. By the time you know it, you're going to be able to do what you've wanting, been wanting to do. And that's the way life is. Now, notice this. Faith is the same way. If you never use faith, if you never use faith, then it's time to learn it, which we've been learning, but now we're expanding. Say with me, I'm expanding. I'm expanding now, now, I want you to look at me for a moment. Expanding means you have to stretch so that faith can work. We've got to stretch our lives so that faith can work. Now, remember, we're saved by what altogether? Grace, Grace altogether through faith. faith. So in other words, when you said, Jesus, come into my life, boom, grace came through your pipeline, which you already have a faith. So, so from now on, everything that's going to come from the hands of God, which is the supply of God, it's going to come through faith. It's not going to come any other way. It's going to come through faith. So what happens? We learned last Sunday how to understand our pipeline. Today, we're going to talk about how to in expand it, grow it, grow it, grow it, grow it, grow it. Come on, say, tell me, grow it, grow it, grow it. Amen. Let's, amen. Let's look at Hebrews, the 11th chapter. And listen, we're not going to rush, uh, but if we don't finish tonight, we're going to continue it Sunday. I, and so that's the way it is around here. Now, it's quite interesting you have tables now. The reason why we have tables, we're going somewhere. 
We're going somewhere. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is what we're going to share with you in, in this Sunday. Amen. So listen what it says in Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Say with me, I'm going somewhere with Jesus. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now notice what it says. But without faith. Listen to this. Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verse 6. But without faith. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to read it again. But without faith, it is impossible to please him, which is God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So in other words, you just have to get your believing right. Tonight, get your believing right. Just say, I'm going to believe the Bible, and I'm going to believe what he says. That's all. It doesn't matter what anybody else says. They don't know I'm believing the Bible. I don't care what sociology says, philosophy says, religiosity says, historians say, or, or even the presidential issues or, or whatever. I'm not going to listen to that. What I'm going to listen to is what the Bible says. So the Bible says this all together. Look at it again. But it says to me and to you, but without faith or the pipeline of faith, it is impossible to please him, which is God, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So in other words, I'm going to diligently seek him because he's a rewarder for those. And that's me. So in other words, according to uh, 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 Hebrews, the 11th chapter, verse 6, uh, we have to believe that. So let's get our believing right. I believe. I believe in faith. I believe I have a pipeline of faith. I believe I got saved by grace through this pipeline. So everything else in life that I'm going to need from God has to come through that pipeline of faith. Everything, 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 every tittle, every little thing, every from one cent to a million dollars or a billion dollars. Whatever it may be, you've got to let it come through that pipeline. Now, notice this. Now, the enemy comes to smash that pipeline the enemy comes to put stuff into that pipeline to stop the flow of god and what stops the flow of god could be anything that is against the word of god contrary to the word of god can you say amen, amen. now notice this go with me to heat no well, you're there now go with me to the 10th chapter now hallelujah say with me amen. amen now notice what it says in the 10th chapter verses 38 it says here oh hallelujah say with me hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. So in other words, you've got recompense coming to you. You have a reward coming to you. But don't cast away, therefore, your confidence. In other words, confidence that is on the word you've got to be confident in the word knowing that the word works the word works come on church the word works say with me it works hallelujah amen so we have to believe that now quickly go with me to romans now romans i think what galatians you're not far from galatians go to galatians now the third chapter is to the left if you got electronic books then you go faster you can do it faster galatians the third chapter uh, verses 11 and this is what it says here i want you to see this now notice this notice this Let's take out a phrase so that we can understand about our confidence. Now, in verses 11, he says, but that no man or woman is justified by law in the sight of God. In other words, he's not interested in the law giving part, although the law giving part is important. But we're not here to look at the law giving part. We're here to look. Listen to this. We're here to look at the word of God, which is, but that no man or woman is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the all together, the just shall live by faith. Now notice this, it says the just. Who's the just? We are. I'm the just. I've been justified by Jesus Christ. I'm righteous, made by the blood. I'm just before the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm just before the Lord. So in other words, the just shall live by faith. That word shall doesn't say, well, if you want to. No, no, no. Remember, you got saved by grace. Uh, you got saved by grace through faith. So everything that's going to come through that faith channel is going to be everything from God. So in other words, we can't cast away our confidence knowing that whatever he's going to bring us, we're going to believe it through faith. So in other words, he says, the just shall live by faith. 
What does that mean, Pastor? Everything you've got to do, you've got to believe that because you're righteous, I'm living by faith. I'm calling things in. Now, we're going to talk about that later on. But notice this. The, the beautiful thing about it is this particular phrase, the just shall live by faith. Look at that again. Verses 11. The just shall live by faith. It's quite interesting that the exact phrase is said three times in the Bible. Three times. So in other words, whenever you hear the Bible repeat itself three times to the exact, that means God is trying to get your attention. Whenever you see a repetitive uh, a phrase from the Bible and it's totally, this one's in Galatians, the next one is in Hebrews, and the next one is in Romans, and those three tells you, wait a minute, God is trying to get my attention in three different books written in three different hundreds of years apart, different different segment eras and and so he's trying to get my attention so what is he saying he's saying you are the just you need to live by faith say with me i need to live by faith amen so so listen to this while you're standing in faith understand something you've got to be steady in other words i'm believing god for a breakthrough in finances that seems to be the thing that hits a lot of people uh or or health i'm standing for health Father, I thank you. Your word says by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed by your stripes. Now notice this. What do you do while you're waiting for the break, the manifestation in the physical? You still got to confess it. Father, I thank you that I'm healed. What happens? One time you pray, Father, I ask you to heal me from this disease. Now, Father, according to your word, your word says that I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. So I acknowledge that I'm saved. What am I doing? Faith now is operating. So, Father, I thank you that I'm healed. Now, what happens the next time? Now you say, Father, I thank you, I am healed. Faith is already working. Why? Because you're believing for faith to bring that healing in to manifestation. So what do you do? What do you do until uh, you pray and you say, there it is? What do you do in between there? You keep thanking him. In other words, you're praying, you've got diagnosed with this issue, and then you finally get healed and you say, there it is. So what do you do in between? You thank him, but you remain steady. You don't say, it don't work. You don't say, well, I guess God doesn't want me healed. No, 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 no. Or you say, well, I guess it wasn't meant for me. No, 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 no. Listen, if you know the promises of God, then you stay steady. Listen to what Kenneth Hagin said this. He said this, you've got to stay true, steady in the midst of tests. And that's what it is. Testings are trials. That w- that's what produces faith. Testings and trials produce your faith to stretch even more. When Pastor Christine was diagnosed uh, for cancer, we immediately set the word of God. We said we believe, we receive. So what do we do? Meanwhile, we kept believing, even though doctors were saying everything just hard and hurtful. We just kept standing on that word, standing on that word, until finally the healing manifested to Christine where the doctors were able to say, you know what? <laughs> there's no there's no tumor you're completely gone you're completely healed Amen. we just need to remove that shell in fact we're going to pray for you this friday she's going to go to in, in the in the operation to remove that shell so she knows she's healed why because faith did it in jesus come on church amen, amen. so in other words never go ahead and give the lord a praise amen hallelujah listen to what it says no one ever had great faith if they didn't have great battles are you in a great battle right now? You're getting ready for some great faith. No one won a great victory if they hadn't had a great battle. Come on, church. Amen. Great faith. Great faith comes out of great battles. <laughs> Come on. Amen. Great faith comes out of great battles. When you know that, you will thank God for the test and thank God for the battle. Now notice this. Testings and trials are in the, in the between while you're waiting for that thing to manifest. So what do you do? Like sister said back there, you praise him. But at the same time, you thank him. Father, I thank you that I'm healed. I thank you, Lord, that I'm calling in. Uh, uh, let's say you're calling in finances. Father, I thank you for finances coming. Lord, I thank you that I have a job that provides me seed. But Lord, I thank you that I have, I, I'm, I'm believing for such and such, Lord. And And so I call it in, in Jesus' name, because your word says that you should supply all my needs according to your, according to Jesus Christ. So in other words, I'm calling it in, in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I thank you that I receive it. I thank you that I receive whatever it may be, five, ten, twenty thousand, whatever you're asking God. 
$100, whatever it may be. I thank you that I receive it. What are you doing? You're thanking him because now faith is operating now. See, see there. So in other words, while you're waiting for the for the there's testings, the devil's going to say, you're never going to get it. The devil may say, oh, that's dumb. You're you're not going to get it. Just give up. No, you just say, thank you, Lord. I, I receive my money. I thank you that you're working. Angels are bringing it. People are doing things. You're causing things to happen. I thank you, Lord. Devil say it's not working. Uh, thank you, Lord. It's working. So what's happening? Testings are taking place in that great testing produces great faith. Come on, church, can you say amen? I want you to look at something. Go, let's look at some, some basic things that Jesus did. And let's look at Matthew, the ninth chapter. Now, I know we covered this particular scripture Sunday, but let's go over it again to read more about in the ninth chapter. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you guys excited to be in the house of God? Uh, Matthew, the ninth chapter, verses 27. Now, now, I went ahead and pulled out this scripture so that we could see it. It says that when Jesus departed, uh, thence two blind men followed him crying saying thou son of David have mercy now these are two blind men they followed him and when he was come into the house the blind men came to him now get this picture and Jesus said unto them believe ye that I am able to do this oh man that's a question mark listen they said unto him yeah Lord now I don't know what meaning did they have there you can take it, yeah, Lord, or you can say, yeah, Lord, or yeah, Lord, yay, Lord. You know, whatever it was, right? Either way, they said, yeah, Lord. Now, I want you to see this, verses 29. Then touched he their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were open, and Jesus straightly charged them, saying, see that no man knoweth it. Well, let's focus on according to your faith, be it unto you. So in other words, Jesus is expecting you to have faith when you're asking him. We don't come to, and this is what religiosity taught you, and I was raised this way. Oh, I beg you, Jesus. I beg you. Oh, I beg you. No, 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 no. That's not going to move the hand or the heart of God. God is waiting for you to say, Father, your word declares that Jesus paid the price for me, so therefore I am healed. That moves God right there for so long we've been begging God oh I and you know I know I know that's what religiosity taught us uh, I was in Mexico City and I went uh, we did a crusade and we we're in Mexico City so we had the, a couple days to go visit downtown Mexico so we went to one of the largest Catholic churches in Mexico and I wanted to see because they said there's a lot of gold inside so I wanted to go yeah I couldn't go in because that was a time of a festival and I stood in front of the the plaza and I saw people thousands of people kneeling on their knees going into the church. You remember that, Christine? We were with me, and, and I saw little babies and kids and parents. And the moment they hit the property of the church, they got on their knees. And this in this parking lot, the, the, the parking lot was not what we know parking lot. It was jagged rocks. So you could see a lot of them were bleeding. And so I was confused. I says, I told my interpreter, I says, what's going on? He says, well. Don't take pictures right now, but they're, they're, they're paying a price for God's blessing. And I said, oh, 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 God, something's wrong with this picture. Because Jesus, you shed the price of the blood on that cross. You paid the pain. You, you, you did all the, the, the power that was needed for me to be saved. So therefore, I come boldly into your throne room. And say, Father, I come to you boldly because through Jesus Christ. That's all it takes. You see what religion has taught people? So we have to realize. Now, I want you to just look at, uh, look at the eighth chapter. And I know uh, um, that's okay. We're not going to rush. We're, we're, we're just going to finish it Sunday. Even, we're going to finish early tonight even though. But we're going to finish it Sunday. Uh, chapter 8 of the fifth chapter. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him. A centurion is a leader, a Roman leader, like a general. And saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of palsy, grievously tormented. So that's pretty bad. Can you say amen? And notice what it says. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. I will come and heal him. So in other words, period. Amen. All you have to do is say amen. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak the word only, 
and my servants shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, go, and he goeth, and to another come, and he cometh, and to my servants do this and do that. When Jesus heard it, now notice what he says. When Jesus heard what he said, he marveled and said unto them that followed, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, not, no, not in Israel. So in other words, let's look at, let's, 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 let's go deep into the scripture. What's he saying? He said he found faith in a man that believes in the power of the word. He found a man in all Israel that believes the authority of the word. You just say the word, it's done. I want you to think about that. This is, this is a centurion. He wasn't probably a believer, but he believed that Jesus can heal his, his servant, sick of a palsy and being tormented. I mean, that's pretty bad. That's pretty bad. That's, that's having all kinds of uh, epileptic disease, uh, sickness and, and being tormented. I've known people that have epileptic. I knew a young girl that had about 20, 20 something per day and literally violent ones. Oh gosh, God healed her. But what I'm saying is this, is, is if, if he was saying about authority and Jesus says, you know the authority by the word, what about us? We know the word. So we use the authority. We command the devil, devil. The word says, Jesus rebukes you. Therefore, I take authority over you and I rebuke you. That's authority. You, you tell the Lord, Father, I thank you that your word says this. I'm the head, not the tail. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. Whatsoever my hands touch is blessed. So I'm a blessing, Jesus. Boy, you just gave authority to the world right there. Hallelujah. Amen. When Christine was diagnosed for the doctor, and you know, the bed manners of a doctor are not too good. They called her. They said, Sir, we need to talk to you. Are you sitting down? She, she said, yeah. Boom. They just let it out. And I said, no. Didn't I say that? I said, no. Don't receive that. Well, Christine's in between both. But her faith rose up says, Okay, I hear you, but my God, <laughs> but my God, hallelujah, amen. And we started saying, thank you, Lord, we're healed, we're healed. Come on, give the Lord a praise. We're healed, we're healed, hallelujah, amen. And so that's the power of the word with authority. Let's look at another one, hallelujah, amen. The 15th chapter of Matthew. Are you guys getting something out of this? I know I am. Our faith meter is big and tall and, and we're stretching it, hallelujah, amen. Matthew, the 15th chapter, verses 25. Say with me, hallelujah. hallelujah. Now notice this. Uh, uh, then she, or then came she and worshiped him and saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Now I'm going to explain this to you. And she said, truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou will. Now let's explain something here. At this very moment, now, and I'm going to explain to you, and I want you to understand something. There's, a, there's an understanding here. At this moment, Jesus came to preach to the Jewish people. And here was a, a woman that was not Jewish. She was of another race, of other nation. So in other words, Jesus saw her come, but he couldn't do what he needed to because God said, you're to go to the Jews first. But she was persistent. She's, and, and the thing about it is, it's kind of strong that God, Jesus kind of used an example of a dog. But he wanted you to understand something that whatever fell from the crumbs, the dogs eat. Now, I want you to look at this. And she didn't look at it as a racial slur. She didn't look at it as just a, 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 a got offended. She says, no, Lord, even whatever falls in the, cr on the crumbs, I'll eat it. And that's when Jesus saw her faith. Now, let me, let's talk about this for a moment. At that very moment, he said, I've never seen faith like you. From that moment on, Listen, listen to what I'm going to say. The time clock for Jesus to start ministering to other groups of people happened right here. Her faith stretched Jesus' faith. It stretched her attitude. Therefore, later on, Peter came and started ministering to the Gentile world. Now notice this. Listen, listen to what I'm going to say before you get excited. 
the Jewish people to this day have a hard time receiving Jesus. But who's the one that's receiving Jesus right now? The Gentile world. So in other words, what she did for you, what she did for you, she had faith enough to move the hand clock of God into the future. And now we're the ones that got saved because of this woman. Come on. Now that's powerful faith, man. That is, come on. Everybody look at me for a moment. That is big faith. Hallelujah. That's what we're doing today. We're stretching our faith. So in other words, don't tell me you can't change tomorrow. Don't tell me you can't change what's down the road. You can change your generation. You can change tomorrow. You can change the city. You can change the nation. You can change the world simply by faith. But we have to realize our faith has to be expanded by the word of God. I'm telling you, listen, listen. There was a, there, there, <laughs> the world's largest church, listen to this, the world's largest church superseded the one in, in Korea. This one is in Africa. Almost 100,000. Thousand people come five. Let's see, a hundred thousand people come at each service, which is five services a Sunday. Hundred thousand. So, what is a hundred times five services? What is it? Five hundred thousand. Think about it. Now, notice this. They asked this pastor, in fact, the uh, this church is so huge that it has 10,000 seats this way, 10,000 seats this way, 10,000 seats this way, 10,000 seats this way, and it just keeps going, 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 going. And, and they asked the pastor an interview, and he said, how did you grow this church so big? He says, I just expanded my faith. That's all it was. I just expanded my faith. And notice this. I can tell you about people that are multimillionaires, billionaires, that expanded their faith. I can tell you people that are right now in, in tremendous uh, uh, businesses or whatever because of expanding faith. Listen, it works, ladies and gentlemen. Now, let's go quickly to Romans now. A a a hallelujah. Romans. Woo, Jesus. I'm getting excited. Hallelujah. I've been excited. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Romans, the 10th chapter. Look at your Bibles or look at your iPhone. Romans, the 10th chapter, verses 17. I want you to see this. Hallelujah. Amen. I want you to see this. Romans, the 10th chapter, verses 17. Now, notice this. Everybody there? I got your phones on, your iPhones and your iPads, your Bibles and all that good stuff. Hallelujah. Notice what it says. So then faith. So then faith. So then faith cometh. Let me just add this in there through the pipeline of faith. It cometh through the pipeline by very simple hearing and hearing by Watching television. Oh, oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hearing and hearing, watching sports. Oh, 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 oh wait. I got to get it right. Hearing and hearing by, wait, sleeping. No, no. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Remember, whenever you repeat the word, whenever you see it twice repeated or three times, hearing and hearing. So in other words, he's trying to get your attention. How does faith come? All together by hearing. How does faith come by? Hearing. So the more that you hear it, the more that you believe it, the more that you believe it, the more that you say it, the more that I say it, it's because I believe it. The more that I, the more that I, the more that I have a belief it's because I have the word in me. Listen, no word, no belief, no belief. You can't say what you don't believe. They even say liars when they say lies enough, they believe their own lie and they'll say it all the time. Have you ever noticed that? That's why it's very important not to tell a lie, <laughs> because uh, if you say it long enough, you'll believe it, but you may forget it the first day if you lie about it. Amen. Now, quickly go with me to Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Let's go back to Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Hallelujah. Amen. So in other words, faith comes by hearing and hearing by all together the word. Remember, it's the word. The Bible says the word, the word, the word, the word is what changes people's lives. And, and listen, that's the only thing that's going to change your life is the word of God. Prosperity, healing, deliverance, uh, whatever. I'm telling you, I can tell you things that have changed our lives simply by believing God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews, uh, Hebrews, the fourth chapter. Hallelujah. Amen. And let's look at verses one. And I think this will probably be the last one if we can. Let us therefore fear, that word fear means reverently honor the Lord. Let us reverently honor the Lord, lest they promise being left, out, left us, out, excuse me, left us of entering into his rest. So in other words, uh, 
if we will reverent honor the Lord, we're going to rest. Now, let me ask you something. When people are bothered at night about something, don't they can't sleep, right? That's not rest. You know what rest is? Sleeping, resting, letting your letting your stress level down, trusting the Lord. So in other words, let us enter that rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. So in other words, yeah, there's many of you that are short of it. <laughs> come on, church. Amen. The Bible knew that a lot of us would be up at nighttime worried, 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 worried. I tell you, there's a lot of people worried. And, you know, I'm not exempt from that. There's times where I get up and I'm not worried, but I, go, I get up to pray. I don't get up just to turn on the TV and say, okay, let me watch TV to ignore this worry. I have to pray. Don't ever do that. If you get up in the middle of the night worried, don't turn on the TV. That's not going to help you. Get the word of God and, and start saying the word. It'll, it'll drown out the fear. And, and for unto us was the gospel preached. Unto us was the gospel preached. Remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. For unto us was the gospel preached as we, as we, as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith. In them that heard it. So in other words, listen, when you use the word, then you got to use faith. Now look at, look at me for a moment. You can be a person of word, 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 and there's a lot of people that know the word, 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 and there's a lot of people that just so religiously know the word, 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 but they have no faith. What, what does it benefit them if they're not going to apply faith to what they learned? And then there's a lot of people say, well, I have faith, 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 faith. I believe for I believe for this. I believe for this. But they're never in the word. Well, I believe God can do this. And I believe God can do this. I believe. God. But they're never in the word. What profit is that without the word? So in other words, you have to have the word. And now you've got to allow faith to work in that word. So in other words, Christine says, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Amen. Now, that's the word. Then she started saying, I'm healed. I'm healed. I don't feel that anymore. I don't feel that tumor no more. I'm healed. I'm healed. What's she doing? Faith now. Even though she felt it, even though she feels it in the natural, she's believing what the word says. Until finally she said it enough to overcome her belief and to believe that it worked. And then one day she wakes up and she says, honey, it's not there. Doctor says, well, evidently it's working. Whatever you're doing, well, we know it's working. We know it's working. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we're excited because tomorrow, hallelujah, tomorrow or Friday, Friday, it's the, the doctor, every time he goes in that room, he says, my goodness, uh, it's, a, it's great. We keep doing what you're doing. It's working. Hallelujah. Amen. And so there's, there's other things that I can't tell you uh, live, but it's funny what he said. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? amen? Let's look at one more scripture. All right. Matthew 21. I didn't hear my alarm clock yet. <laughs> all righty. I said it before the alarm clock. All right. All right. Uh, Matthew 21. We'll finish it with this. Matthew 21. Hallelujah. Amen. I asked if I can do that. And the Lord said, do it. Because I'm enjoying what I'm doing it now. And I'm extending it to other, ser to other services. Matthew, the 21st chapter, verses 21. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily, verily, or verily, I say unto you, if you have faith, there it is, you do have faith, and doubt not, you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, he cursed the fig tree and died, but also you shall say unto this mountain, this mountain, look at it, say it with me, this mountain. In other words, evidently he's teaching them there's a big problem, but thou but thou be thou removed and be cast into the sea and it shall be done. All things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believe in and you shall receive it, period. So in other words, that's it. That settles it. That settles it. He says, if you have faith, which we do, you can say to this fig tree, which is which really he, he, he commanded a fig tree to be removed. He was teaching the disciples and then he used another tree and now he's using a mountain. Now notice, listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. I'm going I'm to tell you something. A mountain is anything that stands in your way. With Jesus, it can be removed. Now notice this. I'm going to say something that's going to really uh, encourage us. There was a city that had a mountain that was always stopping the rain from coming to their fields. And whenever it would, it, whenever it would rain on the other side of the mountain, it would literally dry up their side. So finally, the city 
took this serious. Now, I know a lot of naysayers were saying, oh. so they were saying, Father, your word says, mountain be removed in Jesus' name. Mountain be removed in Jesus' name. They would say it every day. So the city started saying that. They, they made a slogan. Be removed now in the name of Jesus. Now, notice this. Now, notice this. I'm going to tell you something. An earthquake came. Now, people say, woo, earthquakes are bad. Not this one. Earthquake came, brought no destruction, but that mountain crumbled. It just, and they were able to, so, so that was a sign to them that it works even in the physical. Now, come on now, come on now, this is powerful. This is powerful. So they were able to get the rain, but notice this, they were now able to build homes out of the bricks that were rocks that came from that mountain. So not only got to bring, brought water to their, their gardens, but now brought a lot of rocks to build. At that time, it was nothing but mud and straws and stuff like that. You see what I'm saying? So, so see, oh, God, there's so many scriptures I can tell you about that. All right? So let's believe God. Say with me, mountain, mountain. Be, removed be removed now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. I, believe. I believe. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The mountain is moved. The mountain is In moved. Jesus, name. Jesus' name. Now go ahead and stand up. Hallelujah. Amen. This is it. This is it. This is it. You, you just speak to whatever is a mountain in your life, whatever it may be. Whatever it may be, whatever it may be. Come on, church. I, I've been living this for 30, uh, 34, 35 years, and mountains have moved. One of the largest mountains was the one we dealt with uh, in, back in February. was one of the first mountains we dealt with. We commanded to be removed. And so we got the manifestation. We got a letter in the mail uh, of our most recent test that they did, and it says, we find no cancer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Now, now we're going to go to get the surgery done and they're going to study that margin and then now they're going to say, okay, we, now we really have scientific evidence that it's completely done. Amen? So we believe it's done. Let's go to the Lord. Amen? Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you, Lord, that nothing is impossible uh, with those that believe and we believe. Nothing is impossible for us, Lord. We believe. 